Welcome to the Winning Family Podcast with Rodney and Michelle Gage, a podcast designed to help you build winning relationships in your marriage and with your kids. My name is Dr. Linda Travelute, and I'm your host for the Winning Family Podcast. We want to say thank you for joining us. It would mean the world to us if you would subscribe to our podcast and rate it, review it, and let us know if you find the content helpful and encouraging. Also, please be sure to share this episode with your friends because you know what? They need it too, right guys? Awesome. At the end of today's podcast, we want to share with you how you can get a free copy of Rodney Gage's new book, The Double Win. It'll help you win at work and at home, and we want to get a copy to you absolutely free. And today I'm joined with Rodney and Michelle Gage, and we're going to be talking about helping your kids learn their true identity. What a big topic for this day and age. Yes. And I love that you're covering this. So welcome to the podcast, Rodney and Michelle, and let's talk about identity. Thank you. Yeah, big topic as always. We love taking on big topics. And uh, this is certainly that's one that's huge in our culture and society today. A lot of questions surrounding the whole subject of identity. And my goodness, we could go on and on about this one. And this is one that hits home for a lot of, obviously, uh, parents and especially those who are navigating the treacherous waters of helping their kids navigate through a lot of confusion and so much stuff we're hearing through the media so much stuff now that's being exposed um and many ways um there's a lot of controversy and a lot of politics that are all um you know i think even adding to the confusion if you will from so many conversations that are going on. And so a lot of people don't know where, where they stand or what to believe or who, who, to, who to believe when it comes to, you know, really getting a, a firm understanding of this issue of identity. No greater place to have a firm understanding than in the home because we have the opportunity, you know, to really help our children build a strong identity there. Yeah, absolutely. And when you think about uh, the whole subject of identity, just to kind of break it down, when you think about the culture and the world in which we live, I mean, mm -hmm. the people today, are, they're confused about their own personal identity, you know, for various reasons, ethnic identities, sexual identities, gender identity, spiritual, even spiritual identity, you know, when you mm -hmm. think about it. So, and we also have to understand that our identity, and now I'm just going to say this right out of the gate, whether people like it, don't like it, agree with it, don't agree with it, that's okay. We can all agree to disagree. We can all, <laughs> we can all um, you know, hopefully see from each other's perspectives on things. But I think at the end of the day, you know, when you think, when you think about in terms of a, of a car, if you have questions about a car, if you have questions about how it's supposed to work, if you have questions about what happens, you know, when it doesn't work, <laughs> if you have any questions whatsoever about the car itself, okay, well, the best thing to do is to go to the person who invented it. They can help answer all those questions. And I think that's where sometimes people miss, you know, you know, maybe get misunderstood or maybe have a misunderstanding when it comes to trying to figure out the whole identity issue. It's like we have we've listened to this person, listened to that person. We got this person's opinion, that person's opinion. Let's just all just go back to the person who invented it all. Human race. <laughs> That's God himself. Yeah. You know, in the beginning, God created. Yes. And so not only did he created the heavens and the earth, but he created mankind. And so, you know, he, he is the author, he is the, the designer, he is the one who made us and created us, and for what reason? To have a relationship with us. And so if anybody knows and understands our identity, it's God, because God gave us our identities. And so that's something that I think we have to just establish early, foundationally in this, especially in our conversation today, because the enemy, who's also, or we have a real adversary, the devil, the Bible says, who is out to steal, kill, and destroy. So he wants to rob us of those identities. And therefore, um, because he is out to destroy people's lives, well, if he can create confusion with this issue, my goodness, he can wreak havoc and on a generation of yes. people. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where a lot of people, unfortunately, 
right now, I think, are confused because they're hearing so much, so many voices from culture, from the political world. Um, you know, everybody's got an opinion about something. But at the end of the day, what we have decided is just to say, you know what, we're going to stand on God's word. It's our ultimate source of authority, uh, the Bible. And God is the author of the Bible. He is the creator of mankind. He is the creator of all things. And so we're going to go to him who designed us, who made us, so that we can better understand what his purpose is for this whole subject of identity. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's interesting because one of the early characters in the Bible that's um, one that I'm sure that many can relate to is the, is the story of you know, Moses. Moses is interesting. He was, he was born as a Jew, but at the same time, he was raised in a completely different environment and culture with the Egyptians. Yeah. So here he was, you know, at an early age as a baby, you know, um, suddenly being rescued when, when, you know, the Pharaoh's daughter discovered, you know, him brought him up in this incredible palace, you know, there in Pharaoh's palace. So he was surrounded by power and wealth and all of these things. But yet at the same time, he knew there was something not right because what he saw, and what he began to learn over time is he was living a lie. Mm -hmm. He was not true to who he was. I think that in and of itself leads to where a lot of people struggle because they are, they are, basing a lot of decisions when it comes to their identity because they feel like they're living a lie or they are not being true to who they feel that they are. But Moses was not living a lie in the sense he was doing something that was kind of from his own perspective. He knew that he was actually carrying out something that was different from what God made him to be. And what God made him was he made him as an Israelite. He made him as a Jew. And he knew trying to be something that he wasn't was dishonoring. And so as a result, God revealed to him, you know, who he truly was. And I think that's what is so important for people to understand when it comes to the whole issue of identity. Because when we truly have our understanding of our true identity, it demonstrates a sense of spiritual maturity in our lives. I tell people all the time, hey, you know, one of the one of the most important things that you can do is get to know God, because the more you get to know God, the more you get to know yourself. Yes, it's good. The, the, the more you understand of who God is, the more you understand who you are. And so I think it's very, very important that we learn to be who God made us to be. God created us and he made us for a specific reason and purpose. Mm -hmm. And so our identity and even our sexual identity, our gender was assigned to us, given to us at birth, given to us by God himself. Right. So regardless of how we feel on the inside, at the end of the day, we are who God made us to be and he made us for a specific reason. And so I think that's um, really important for us to realize is that our identity, when we understand our true spiritual identity, it's a mark of spiritual maturity in our lives. Because immaturity is what? It's focused on self. It's focused on what I think or what I feel or what I want. But when we focus really what from God's perspective, then now all of a sudden I'm taking the focus off of myself and I'm putting my focus on God and I'm realizing God has a plan and a purpose. He made me this yes. way for a greater purpose. Yes. Which leads me to another reason, that's just it defines our responsibilities. So God made us for a specific reason and purpose to fulfill an assignment that he has for us. Because there are certain things that, that I can only do that others may not be able to do. Mm -hmm. God made me a certain way in order to accomplish the things that he had destined for my life. Which leads me to a third thing, and that is the fact that, you know, our identity also helps brings a sense of uh, focus to our priorities. So when you're clear on who you are in the eyes of God and you become secure in that, man, that gives life new meaning, gives yeah. clarity and focus to your life. And it frees you up to truly be yourself in a, in a sense of freedom, knowing that, hey, I'm here for a purpose. I have a divine assignment for my life. Yeah. Man, God made me this way to bring 
glory to him. And now I get the privilege and the honor of living my life in a way that allows me to, to maximize the true fulfillment and, and sense of, of joy, knowing that I'm completing the assignment that God has for me. And it just, it just brings simplicity to our lives when we are secure in who God made us to be. And of course, the last thing I always tell people is our, when you understand your identity, it really allows us to, to, to focus on our destiny because it gives life direction and it allows us to be able to live our lives without regret. It, it, it also allows us to live our lives where we know and understand that, you know what, um, I can walk in my destiny, walk in my future. God has a hope, he has a plan for and a purpose for my future. And when I'm walking in that and I'm secure in that and I find my joy in that, then I am doing the very thing that God put me on this earth to do. Mm -hmm. So those well, are I just, don't think our kids are learning that in school. No, <laughs> no. At the public school, they're not learning that. No. They're learning something very different. Absolutely. So I think that as parents, if we can instill that in them, that they're, they do have a destiny, that God yeah. has created them for such a time as this. And we have the greatest privilege of developing and helping our children to realize their true worth and identity in their life. What, what a privilege that we have and help us not to miss it, Absolutely. you know, even different stages of parenting from babies all the way up where I'm never going to stop being a mom right. and uh, you'll never stop being a dad. And, you know, it's just that is the responsibility and the, the joy that we have as parents is to help our children because there is so much confusion right now. Well, I wanted to establish those four things, you know, just right out of the gate, mm -hmm. because, again, if you want to get to know yourself, get to know God. He is he is our designer. And as you stated, Michelle, kids are not learning that today. And, and so if they're not hearing that, and this is why it's so important to address this at home, if they're not hearing it from a home, if our kids are not being affirmed in, in the right way of helping them understand of who they are in the eyes of God and helping them understand that their identity is based and rooted in who God made them to be, then what's gonna happen is, is they're going to hear something that conflicts with that, that causes them to question themselves, to question ultimately God. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is, is they begin to compare themselves with others. You know, if they're all, and now if they're feeling insecure, mm -hmm. now they've opened themselves up to just about anything and everything that's going to meet or satisfy a temporary void in their life. So if I can find acceptance with this group, or these people over here will embrace me because they feel like, you know, hey, we all have something in common. Then all of a sudden we can look for things, we can hear things that will justify what once again in our hearts maybe we have believed and what perhaps is being believed oftentimes is a lie. Yes. So yes. the mind will justify what the heart believes. That's right. So if we if we believe lies and we start living a lie, then therefore our identity is centered around something that is not true and consistent with who God is and who God made us to be. That's right. And that's where the real challenge is with so many of our kids today mm -hmm. in our culture and society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so you say that we are defined by who God says we are, right? And you've got five things about that so share with us number one well one of those is just the the whole concept of being valued god he, he has placed a high value on us he made us he created us therefore we are valuable in the eyes of god the bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made and so think about that for a moment when we were in the bible says when we were in our mother's womb he formed us he, 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 went, he went to great detail in making us who we are, the way that we are. God doesn't make mistakes. No, he doesn't. He created us unique, a one of a kind. He places high value. We matter more than anything to God. And so when our kids understand that, 
that they are valued, that they have tremendous worth in the eyes of God, what does that do? It gives them security. It gives them confidence because they understand that their life matters. Right. And that's huge because anybody who has faced rejection, hurt, disappointment, mm -hmm. now what happens? They begin to question themselves. They don't feel like their life matters. Mm -hmm. But if somebody else over here helps affirm that and perhaps meets a need in my life that is missing, now all of a sudden I'm going to gravitate to this group or gravitate to this person because they're making me feel valued. And that's where things can get really challenging for a lot of um, kids today, especially who are making decisions when it comes to friendships or friendship groups, uh, things that they're hearing. Because once again, you know, maybe they, they, they're, they're lost in who they are and their identity and they're looking for somebody to bring some validity to their life. I when think that, it's so important also, you know, that we speak words of life into our children around their value. Um, and you can do that through God's word. We've talked mm -hmm. about in previous podcasts how important the word of God is and that it is truth. It is the truth. Mm -hmm. It is our true north in our lives if we call ourselves mm -hmm. believers and we that it's where we base everything off of. And so when you look at like Ephesians 2:10 that says we are his masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to do great things that he planned for us long ago. We are his um magnum opus you know the greatest work of art that he's ever yeah. created each one of us are individually made with the fingerprint of god upon our mm -hmm. lives the bible tells us in romans and to speak that over your children mm -hmm. you know before they go out the door to school you are his masterpiece the greatest thing god has ever created and helping them remember their value they need it i mean they may not want it every single day, but right. they need it That's every right. single day because they're going out into mm. a world that is taking away, taking withdrawals from their heart. Mm. And we need to be putting deposits in yeah, and so reminding good. them of their value, their worth, and their weight, not only in the eyes of God, but in the eyes of us as parents. We love and value them because it, it's just it's a tough it's a tough place right now you know different seasons of life that our children walk through i think of middle school girls and the, the challenge of mean girls you know that are Man. you know and the it's as you drama. said the comparison is is taking away and we got to continue to just put deposits into their life and remind them of who they are hmm. yeah it's um it's important for kids to feel their worth. Yes. You know, there's there's a phrase or, you know, choice of uh, words that we often throw out there. It's called self-worth. What does that mean? That means that we have a sense of value. We understand our value. We understand the fact that we matter and therefore we can take worth. We can take that value as it relates to ourselves because God has placed a high value on who we are. That's right. You take if if I offered a hundred dollar bill, <laughs> to anybody who's watching, we all like a hundred crisp. Yeah. Crisp. If I gave you a crisp one hundred dollar bill, I don't have one. I wish I did. But if I offered you a crisp one hundred dollar bill, you would take it, right? I mean, we would all take that. But what if I took that crisp one hundred dollar bill and I crumpled it up in my hand? I got all wrinkled. Would you still want it? Of course you would. Well, what if I took that? crinkled $100 bill and I threw it on the ground. I stomped on it and I got it all soiled and stained from my tennis shoe. Would you still want it? Well, of course you would. Why? Well, even though it's been stomped, stomped, you know, crumbled up and, and stomped upon and soiled and stained, doesn't take away its value. It's still a $100 bill. And life can get hard and things can get messy in life and we can go through difficulties, but that doesn't change the value of who God made us to be. That's right. And so yeah. we have to help our kids understand that. Absolutely. So the first one is value. So we're talking about the, the things, uh, how we are defined by who God says we are. Mm -hmm. and, and first is valuable. The second is lovable. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like? You know, when you think about, you know, when you think about our appearance, 
I think a lot of, we put so much emphasis on our appearance, right? Mm -hmm. How we look, you know, our mm -hmm. clothes we wear, you know, even the brands of clothes that we wear. And there's so much focus that is on the image. Yeah. The filter. Yeah. All of the stuff <laughs> that make us look great, feel great, picture. all that stuff. <laughs> That's right. But it is, unfortunately, it's not reality. But what happens is if somebody feels unvaluable or like they don't matter and then they feel like they are unlovable because of maybe the way they look or the fact that something bad happened to them or whatever words circumstances spoken. words yeah. spoken over them absolutely mm -hmm. which is catastrophic for so many people who have experienced emotional abuse or mm -hmm. you know sexual abuse or physical abuse whatever kind of abuse that can be so traumatic in a person's life and so therefore they feel like that crumbled up, stained, right. stomped upon, right. soiled $100 bill. But that does not mean that they're not lovable. Right. That's right. right. And at the end of the day, we need to understand that we are loved by God. We are made by God. We are loved. We are loved by God. And we need to understand that because God loves us, he also wants us to take pride in who he made us to be. Mm -hmm. It's not that we want to look in the mirror and say, sing how great thou art every day. <laughs> it's not that we're in love with ourselves. That's that's going to the opposite extreme there. But when I'm but mm -hmm. you're having a sense of confidence and security, mm -hmm. knowing that, you know what, other people may reject me and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Other people may not accept me and that's okay. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I am loved and accepted mm -hmm. by God. Mm -hmm. And if God loves me, and God accepts me, but yet you don't love me and you don't accept me, my attitude is, what's your problem? Yeah, there you go. Because <laughs> I'm loved and I'm accepted by God, my right. designer, right. my creator. I think also you have to address the issue that some children live their lives desiring the love of a father mm. or the love of a mother that they feel like they just can't get their attention. Uh, you know, maybe dad is too busy and they are living their life looking for that love. And I think you, you have to address that too, because we can say, you know, I'm loved, look, you know, look at yourself in the mirror, but there's something deep in their heart that they're missing that love of a father. Mm -hmm. I, I know a lot of times or, um, and what would you say to a child, maybe a teenage boy that's going through something so challenging right now and he's just acting out, you know, maybe uh, to a parent that's listening today, maybe they don't even realize that it's their child saying, I need to know that you love me. Yeah. And, you know, they're trying to get your attention maybe by the way that they're acting out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we, we've talked about this in previous episodes, but God is the ultimate supplier, you know, of our needs. Right. And because he's the ultimate supplier, I think the challenge and the temptation is, and this is, this can be true of any of us, but the moment we start looking for other, to, to other people or to other things to meet a need in our life that only God can meet, mm -hmm. That's when we set ourselves up for even more hurt mm -hmm. and more disillusionment and more disappointment. Mm -hmm. Because once again, we're trying to find a temporary fix. We're, we're, we're trying to find something or somebody who will show me that love, who, who will somehow make me feel lovable and valued because I haven't gotten it from anybody else or anywhere else. Right. So if this person suddenly is now showing me some attention or showing mm -hmm. me some affection, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, man, that's what's been missing. So I'm going to gravitate to that, which oftentimes leads us to compromising. Mm -hmm. we, we often will give certain parts of ourselves away simply because we crave that love mm -hmm. so much that we're willing to put everything on the line all because we're trying to get a need met in our life. And the problem is, is the need that somebody else can meet is only going to be a temporary satisfaction. It's only gonna be a temporary moment. Whereas when we look to God, our, our creator, he's the one who can satisfy and he's the one who can meet the permanent need for love and for acceptance mm -hmm. that only he can. That's good. And mm -hmm. so we have to help our kids 
understand where the source of love or the source of you know of fulfillment comes from but at the same time parents we have to do everything that we can to reinforce that mm -hmm. so that our kids live with a sense of security where they're secure in their identity of who god made them to be and you know what when mom and dad messes up and we fall short right Guess who's the one that needs to make a confession? Yeah. It's us as parents. Absolutely. That's when we can go to our son or go to our daughter mm -hmm. who maybe has been neglected because of a lack of attention or affection or whatever. And we can say, will you forgive me? I haven't been what I should have been or could have been. I, I was wrong in things that I've said or, you know, and so what happens then is that it helps once again reestablish trust. Mm -hmm. It helps open up the heart that maybe has been closed or a heart that's been hardened because of hurt. Now all of a sudden can be softened and be opened mm -hmm. so that that love once again can be restored and reestablished and reaffirmed in that relationship. So I think those are just important reminders as parents to help once again, reinforce that our kids are valuable and that they are lovable. Yes, yes. So God is saying we are valuable, lovable, and acceptable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about forgivable? This is huge. I mean, God is a God of grace and mercy. He is, and he, you know what? He demonstrated the fact that we're forgivable by doing what? By giving his son Jesus. Yeah to die for us. Mm -hmm. He canceled the record of our sins upon the cross. Mm -hmm. And so what that demonstrates to us is that, you know what, there's no sin that's too bad. There's no line that, you know, if we've crossed whatever line, that, that, that simply, that doesn't mean that there's no point, that we, do, we don't reach a point of no return. No, God is always there. He's waiting for us to come back to Him. Mm -hmm. And the same is true in the earthly natural relationship where husbands and wives and parents and their kids, we have to learn to forgive one another just as God has forgiven us. Mm -hmm. And when we forgive each other, what does that do? It allows us to be able to love and accept each other the same way that God loves and accepts us. Yes. So yeah, we're valuable, we're, we're lovable, we are acceptable as well as forgivable yes. in every area of our lives. Yes. And that's yes. so important to reinforce who God is has made us to mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. And it's now great. what about this last one? Because this is a huge one too. And, and you're suggesting that God sees us as capable. Absolutely. No matter what. Absolutely. No matter what. Is Absolutely. that what you're saying? No matter yes. what. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No matter what your past looks like, no matter what mistakes you've made, whatever imperfections, you know, we often mm -hmm. think, you know, that disqualifies us. No, the Bible says, I love a uh, Paul says in Philippians 4, 13, you know, I can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. And so God is able to do amazing and, 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 and really just extraordinary things in and through our lives, but we can't do it on our own. But, but when we become secure in who God made us to be, what does that do? It gives us self-confidence. I like to say it this way. He turns our he turns our self-confidence into self-godfidence mm. because our self-confidence comes from the godfidence in our lives. So it, it gives us a greater sense of confidence through the godfidence factor in our lives that allows us to be able to see that we can be overcomers, that we can be more than conquerors, that we can achieve with God's help things that we could never do on our own. And We've heard lots of stories, I think, too, um, of children or maybe even in our lives, maybe words were spoken over us and labels were given to us that maybe, you know, like for myself, that she's shy or she's laid back and mm. she won't, you know, be maybe as assertive or accomplish as, as much as, as, as maybe a sister or a brother and how easily those things can come off of our tongue and, and they will label our children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we, 
we have again the privilege to live intentional and speak intentional words over our children and to tell them how capable they are and to call out the things that they are strong in and to know we've talked about on past uh, podcasts to know their natural bent to know their gifting and to say you know god has gifted you in such a way in the way that you speak to people or uh, the way that you notice needs and to be able to say that you're are so capable in this area yes. and begin to call it out in them and begin to encourage them in that area in their life to where they feel you know that they could do anything mm-hmm. when it comes mm-hmm. to the gifting and the calling on their life and it's just so important the labels that we give our mm-hmm. children mm-hmm. are so important and one of them better be that they, that they are capable because they are yeah. god has given us each one a uh, unique design and um and a unique G- gps you know in our lives and different things that passions and even some of the problems and struggles that we go through are helping us become who we need to be and our help defining our identity and our calling in our life and we can we have the incredible responsibility and privilege as parents to call that out in our children yeah well to wrap this up today on this whole issue of identity again we're, we're talking about ultimately the, some foundational things here that are so important because i think what happens is is that a lot of people they i'm sure everybody's like well man we'd love for you to speak more to the to the whole gender and sexual identity that all ki-. well it all comes back down to what is our source of belief what do we base our decisions upon who, more importantly, do we look to when it comes to the standard and the source of truth in our lives? Is it the media? Is it what, you know, somebody, uh, some celebrity, you know, who just came out public, you know, the, the big reveal that they were living this lie. And now they're out and they're being true. They're, now it's their truth. They're finally free to be their truth, to speak their truth, and to or live even, their truth. Even what's written it's, in our elementary school it's crazy. books that they're reading in elementary school. Yeah. As simple as that, you know, is challenging so the we truth. Got, yeah. So we got our little, you know, emojis, you know, that everybody's mm-hmm. talking about, you know, of the, the pregnant man. And, you know, it's just it's we've gotten so far from the source of Mm. truth and the source of truth is a person and his name is Jesus. And so we have to understand that the Bible says Jesus said, I'm the way and I am the truth and I am the life. So that's not a. That is not a narrow, some people say, well, that's so, that's so narrow-minded. Well, when you think about it, it's very broad. He says, I am the way. So that means he has a plan. He has a purpose. There is an opportunity there. There is a way that we can live that is so far beyond our capacity to even grasp. It's so good. And there's a way that he has designed for us that's unique. But he is also the truth. So whatever confusion or lies or deception or whatever that's mudding the waters of our beliefs, well, guess what? There is a standard and there's a source of truth. And his name is Jesus. For what reason? There is a life. There is an opportunity that we can experience that he has designed just for us. And so here's the key. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3.16, and we'll wrap it up with this. This is so important because this really should be our standard for truth. This should be the educational manual right here on sexual conversations, on relational conversations, on financial conversations, on whatever conversation you want to have that's controversial. Here is where I always encourage people to go. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. All scripture, not some of it, all of it, All scripture is inspired by God and it is useful. That means it's relevant and practical to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and it teaches us to do what is right. 
And so we just have to, at the end of the day, define what is the source of our belief? Who is the source of our beliefs? And, and if that is God, then God has got our back. He's put guardrails and he's put guidelines there for a purpose in our lives to protect us, not to hurt us, mm -hmm. because he has a good plan and a purpose for mm -hmm. our lives. Mm -hmm. And so if we want to find our true identity, who better to go to than the one who made us and created us? And that's where our source of confidence and source of identity truly comes from, is from God himself. The manufacturer. That's it. The manufacturer. I love, I love that analogy. That's good stuff. Well, we're talking about identity and how you can help your kids learn their true identity. And again, it goes back to the manufacturer, God himself. So we have discussed five things that God says we are, right? Mm -hmm. We're valuable, we're lovable, we're acceptable, we're forgivable, we're capable. Mm -hmm. What an incredible gift. Well, as we wrap up our time together today, we wanna to say thank you for joining us. And we'd love for you to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. That's also an opportunity for you to reach out and ask questions or uh, leave questions on the podcast page. And you can even post your questions so that in future episodes, Rodney and Michelle can answer those. And we want to just encourage you to do one more thing. Subscribe, rate, and review because that'll help us. And we want to tell you about this opportunity here. And if you're watching us on YouTube, you have a chance to get your hands on the Double Win book right here by Rodney Gage. What a beautiful book. It's incredible. I started reading it and it is phenomenal, guys. Great job, Rodney. You can get your hands on a free copy and all you have to do is go to the doublewinclub.com doublewinclub.com you'll learn about how you can be a part of Rodney and Michelle's mentoring program and we just really appreciate your time being with us today we hope this has added value to you until next time remember we're here to help you win at home and win at life